screen. Get on my screen, please. And most of you probably will know um, if you're on social media. Some of you might not be. Do we all know what that is? changed it was when I saw Sally's top just before people started arriving. I saw her top and she's got a top with a butterfly on. And um, you'll see why that makes sense in a moment. I felt actually that was God saying, no, I want you to bring the word that you prepared. Um, and so it was all about Sally's t-shirt this morning. So <laughs> I, I've had a bit of a crazy week. We've been moving house and uh, oh, it's just horrible moving house, isn't it? The only good thing is we're actually we're having a homeless as well. Our house is already so we actually moved into Hotel Sandra and Dave Bailey, which is, I'm telling you, five stars. Absolutely. I don't actually want to move out. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. So um, we're, we're, it's been a crazy week. Like, I went to the Keith's house on Tuesday for prayer, as is custom of my week, if, if, unless something really important comes in um, or just takes me away. I always go to prayer every Tuesday. That's for anyone, by the way, 10 a.m. at the Keith's house. And um, I went there. Uh, without, without any sort of idea of what I was going to preach on this morning, which is not good because if I am preaching on a Sunday, I generally like to at least have started to pray into what I'm going to be preaching on and have a message by Monday night, latest. But on Tuesday morning, I didn't even have a clue. I didn't even, I hadn't even, I hadn't even started praying into my message. So I went into their house to, to, with one of my agendas for the prayer meeting was, could you pray for me because I need, I, I need a message for Sunday. And um, I ended up, we didn't, I ended up, I didn't pray a prayer on Tuesday. I didn't pray one prayer, prayer. Yet I left that house with a message. And um, I was like, wow, I love how you do that, God, you know? In fact, you guys did pray for me, didn't you? You guys prayed for me. And um, that's a word for someone here, actually. You know, if you don't have anyone that you've actually invited into your life or you've intentionally asked to pray for you, on a regular basis, you should do that. It is super, super important in the Christian journey. Seriously, it might mean you've been a bit vulnerable. It might mean you just sharing some things that is a little bit awkward, but that is so important. I know so much of the blessing and the, and the, and the grace and the favor and the fruit that is in our lives is because of people in this room who are praying for us on a regular basis. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. So anyway, little bunny trail there. But that, if you don't have someone or a prayer partner, get a prayer partner, it's so important. But um, I, I met their son, Anne and Anthony's son, Chris, lovely guy, intelligent man, and uh, this was part of the, how the Lord gave me the message, and he started telling me about this project that his son was working on, him and his son, Oliver, your grandson, and um, they were on this transformation project. They were making, they were turning a load of parts and a load of metal into a universal hovercraft. Have you ever heard of one of those? Incredible things. Basically, it's a hovercraft that flies. So like, you know, you know hovercrafts that just go across the water, this thing flies. Basically, Oliver, I mean, uh, Chris and son always wanted to be a pilot, but because he couldn't do the math side of things, he um, basically, he, he made this hovercraft, because apparently if you make something that can fly 10 foot or below, you're allowed to fly it without a pilot's license. So that's a good, good trick, that, isn't it? So he's made this hovercraft, he's making this hovercraft so he can fly. It's amazing. I'm so going to Scotland when he finishes it as well, so I'm, I'm flying that thing. But um, there's something spiritual about it as well, I found, you know. You know, Genesis 1, 2, the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. Do you know what I mean? Sin, that hovercraft. But, um, <laughs> but um, I, I spoke to him and he was talking about his transformational project. Then Anne told me about a man she was going to see the next day um, in, in, in Campbell. And it reminded me 
of, of, this, of, of, of this, 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 this transformation that I read about the day before on Red Roof Town Council Facebook page. And when I read to see where I could see this man that Anne was going to see the next day, these words jumped out at me. It said on the Red Roof Town Council page, we hope you enjoy the day and the transformation in Red Roof. Now, man, anything, I tell you what, I think Christians, I think we as Christians, something about that word transformation that just grips us, you know. I love that word, transformation. It stirs my heart. Yeah, I, I know God loves transformation. He is in the business of transformation, you know. You, you're in the business of transformation. In fact, turn to someone and say, you're in the transformation business. <laughs> Or in the transformation business. God is in the business, God is in the business as transforming towns, cities, and nations. That is so of his heart. And, and, and we are we are part with we we're, we're co-laborers with him in that. You know, Revelation 11 15 says that, that the kingdoms of this world will one day become the kingdoms of our Lord and Christ. This is part of the whole transformation takeover. So that afternoon I went down into Red Roof and I gathered with 4,000 people to watch the transformation of a man. The man engine. Did anyone see the man engine? Yeah. yeah. Well, if you did see the man engine, I've got a little clip. This is the man engine as he transforms into the man engine. <laughs> Rest in a while. If we dig deep and know our own heritage, then we will understand our present. And once we understand our present, we can begin to create our future. Sing from the chamber to the grave. Christian faith. You know, there is no greater 
journey. There's no greater process, there's no greater undertaking in the Christian life than there is being transformed into the image of Christ. That's, that, that is literally our number one assignment on this earth, to become more like him. That's what it actually means to be Christians, Christianos, to be like Christ. And it's just so sad that many millions of people across this globe who, who claim to be Christian, yet they don't even know Christ. Yet they're, they're let alone of being transformed into, into his image. And I find that, that very sad. You see, last week we spoke about perseverance and, 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 and perspiration. And it was a real word in season, I believe, over this house. And although this message isn't linked to last week's message, let me tell you, you will not get transformation in the Christian life without a little perspiration. There needs to be some perseverance and, and some patience as we grow and as we develop and as we mature in our faith. So this morning I really believe the Lord wants to go after this. And I believe it's a, a word over many of our lives. And, and before we can really jump into it and, and really grasp the, the transformation life and grasp these key scriptures that I'm going to be bringing this morning, I really felt that we needed to have an understanding of the fact that you and I are made up of body, soul and spirit. Body, soul and spirit. This is key to understanding these transformational verses that we're looking at. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. And he's coming soon. And he's coming for a beautiful bride, a spotless bride. And in fact, is, is Sarah here? Is Sarah anywhere? Sarah, are you? She's gone to get Eliana, okay. I'll, I'll get her up in a minute. Sarah! <laughs> Sarah Daka! Could you come up here a minute, please? I want to use you for something, an illustration. Would you give my beautiful bride a round of applause? I want to use you for a little, sorry, I didn't warn you about this, but I want to use you for a, no, I didn't warn you about this. Um, basically, we're talking about body, soul, and spirit. Now, this, in fact, I need someone, Barney, could you come up here, mate? I've, I've, I've got this mirror out of the back room here. Fortunately, my whole house is in the back room at the moment, so I can use props, which is great. So I wanted to hold this mirror in front of Sarah, Barney. You see, this, this here is my wonderful wife. This is her physical form. Look at that. That is magnificent. God really did well when making it. And this is Sarah's body. Now, we, we all have a body. This is the obvious part of us, yes? This is a physical body. But Sarah also has a soul. Now, the soul, we have souls. We all have souls. Our soul is actually our kind of our, our mental, our mind, our, 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 our emotions, our will. Some would call it our, our personality. This, this, is, this is our soul. Sarah has a soul. Now, I can affect Sarah's body. I can touch Touch her body, I'm oh, so warm. And uh, easy to preach, I'm preaching. <laughs> I can touch. <laughs> Look away from me. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, I can touch her body, and I can, I can, I can also touch her soul. I can affect her soul by the way I talk to her. I can change her emotions. I can say wonderful things about her, like today you look beautiful and magnificent as you do always. I can talk about how amazing she is, what kind heart she has, how, how generous she is and how, how, how selfless she is and just, just what she does for me. I can change her emotions, I can build her up and encourage her, but I can also pull her down and say nasty things about her and I can frustrate her and make her... <laughs> make her <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's actually affecting her soul. And so we are, you're feeling strong, so that's quite heavy, me. <laughs> just, just, just look into it, it's good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it was a bit of a spontaneous thing, just keep going, Barney. Um, and so we are constantly in touch with our body and with our soul on a minute by minute, day by day basis. We're in touch with them. Literally, we're always, not, we're always having our body and our soul, our emotions are changing, we can, we're feeling our senses, our carnal senses. Now, Sarah and we all also have a spirit. We have a spirit. Now, the spirit is an entirely different ball game. Do you, in fact, you can just put that down and just hold it there. I don't want to hurt you, Barney. Yeah, that's great. 
We have a spirit. Jesus said in John 3, 6, just hold it there one moment. That which is born of flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. Now, it's the spirit that reveals all spiritual truth and reality to Sarah and in Sarah's life. Now, Sarah can't feel her spirit in any natural way. She cannot, she's not in touch with her spirit in a natural way. And it's important we get this, that we don't get our emotions confused with what actually is going on in our spirit. The spirit is the part that God communicates with and where all life and peace and joy and power flows through Sarah's spirit, which you cannot see and she cannot feel with her natural this is important, we get this. Jesus said that God is spirit. God is spirit in John 4, 24, and we will worship him in spirit and in truth. He went on to say in John 6, 63, the spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing, the words I have spoken to you, they are full of spirit and life. And this is key for us to understand this as we're looking at these, as, as what it is to be, to walk into transformation in our life. Sarah wants to look at what her body looks like. She looks into power. She looks into the mirror. She looks into the mirror. That's what Sarah looks like in the natural. Are you feeling awkward, Ben? Don't worry about it. It's okay. Don't hurt me later about this. She looks into the natural. But if Sarah wants to look at what her spirit looks like, she looks into what? She looks into the, the Word. She looks into the Bible. She, upside down. <laughs> she looks into the Word. Okay, Barney, that's great. Right that's, that's fine. Yeah, you can both go now. I just, just, just enjoyed having you up here for a moment. James 1 puts it like this. I'm going, I'm going somewhere with this, people. James 1.23 says this. For if you listen to the Word and don't obey it, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, particularly talking about the revelation of the gospel here of Jesus Christ, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. So James here is likening the word of God as though it were a mirror. A mirror. This is what you look like in the spirit. Now, whenever Sarah wakes up, and before she really kind of gets about her business and goes out, probably like many of you women, probably in here, before you, you know, you go, you might have a shower, you, you might have some breakfast, but before you go out, you all will go and put some makeup on. Probably, you know, unless you're one of those own naturels, which is fine. But generally, most women will put some makeup on. You know, and you know, you, before you go out, you get yourself fixed up. And us men, we might, we might, you know, have a shave, or, or, or we might, you know, style our hair. It takes me a while to get this style, you know. But we, you know, we, we, we generally go to that mirror, and when we go to that mirror, we, we, we never, we actually never see straight into our faces, do we? We actually look at our faces. What we actually see is a representation. We only see a reflection of what we look like. But, but over time, we, we, we actually learn to trust that reflection and that representation of what the mirror is saying. And the mirror of the Word of God, it, let me tell you, is the perfect reflection, is the perfect representation of what we look like in the spirit, of what our spirit looks like. And the more we go to this mirror, the more we look in this mirror, the more we start to trust and have confidence in that perfect representation and reflection of what we look like in the spirit. And this is so powerful. This is so powerful. I'm going somewhere with this. The more we trust who God says we are. I mean, have any of you women, seriously, ever woken up and before, in fact, let's say you're going out for a, 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 a date with your husband or a date with a partner or you're going out just somewhere nice. Have you ever gone out, before you've gone out, started just to kind of put your makeup on using your emotions, 
you know, willing it to look good and, uh, and kind of like, yeah, it feels good, the like, mascara feels right and, and, and yeah, lipstick looks good, looks, looks like my lipstick, put it on and then wham, bam, literally out you go without actually going to that mirror to see if you fixed yourself up right. Has anyone ever done that? Really? No. You see, you, you, you've come to a place where you trust when you look into that mirror, that is the representation and reflection of who you are in your natural. And it's such the same with the Word of God. It's so the same. The Word of God, which gives you the perfect picture of who you are in the Spirit. And as we do this, as we continue to get a revelation of this, I know people know this, and I might be just going over old ground here, but I know this is the Word that the Lord wanted me to preach this morning. As we do this, we start to, more, the more we do this, we build a confidence and a trust in who he says we are. And this is so powerful. And this is so important for us to, to, to get a grasp of as we journey this transformation glory. From glory to glory. Otherwise, we can get mixed up in actually what we believe in. What we believe about ourselves and, and our situations. And we can, we can start making decisions going on our emotions and what we feel like and what the situation looks like. That's why many Christians end up confused and, and disillusioned and, uh, 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 and frustrated. And actually, ultimately, sometimes it can lead to unbelief. You know, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this. This is my second key verse. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. When Sarah gave her life to Jesus 12 years ago, her, she didn't get a new, a brand new body. <coughs> she didn't need a brand new body. She still doesn't. <laughs> she didn't get a brand new body. She didn't get a brand new soul. She didn't, God didn't change her emotions and her, 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 her feelings and what she liked and, and what she liked to do and her, her mental capacity. That didn't change. That didn't become new. She still liked doing the things that she liked to do. She still loved to sing. She still loved to shop. She still loved to hang out with friends. She still liked to party. <laughs> and she still likes to do some of those things well in fact she said she didn't but okay let's use me I, when I gave my life back to the Lord those 12 years ago however long ago it was I still like to do the things that I shouldn't be doing I still like to party I still like to do all the things that came with that partying scene that didn't change those, those, that, that part of me didn't become new it didn't become new. So if it wasn't our body and it wasn't our soul that passed away and became new, what was it? It was our spirit. It was our spirit. And we've got to get this. We've got to get this. When Sarah gave her life to the Lord 12 years ago, her spirit gave birth to spirit. Spirit gave birth to spirit. And from that moment on, the old Sarah died. James 2.26 says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Ephesians 2, 1 says, says we, we were once dead in our sins, but because of his great love, because of God's great love, God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ. We need to understand body, soul and spirit if we're going to truly grasp key transformational verses as we journey in our faith. We've got to get this. It was her spirit that became brand new. Her old spirit died a death. The old passed away. Romans 6, 3 tells us that it was buried with Christ. And in that moment, Galatians 4, 6 kicked in. God sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. You know, many new Christians, I really believe, and many Christians who... Are, 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 are struggling to grow and mature in their faith, if they don't grasp this, they, 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 they end up wondering why they're not feeling any different. Why, isn't, why don't they feel like a transformed, regenerated life? Why are their emotions not lying up? You know, well, what's going on? You know, if, 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 you, if, if a Christian was fat before they were a Christian, 
They were fat after they became a Christian. If a Christian was skinny before they became a Christian, they were skinny after they became a Christian. If a Christian, if, if, if a person, sorry, was skinny before they became a Christian, they were skinny after they became a Christian. If a Christian was grumpy, a person was grumpy before they became a Christian, they were grumpy after they became a Christian. Their soul didn't change. That didn't change. And it's important that people understand this if they're going to know what it is to walk in this transformation life. It is our spirit that becomes brand new. It's our spirit that becomes perfect, mature, complete, not lacking anything. It's our spirit that is recreated and regenerated, that becomes righteous, holy, and pure, and elevated. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, God made him who had no sin become sin so that we could become the righteousness of God. The old has passed away. All things have become new. 1 John 4.17 says, As Jesus is in this world, so are we. We've got to grasp this. We've got to understand body, soul and spirit if we want to look and walk into the transformational life that Jesus offers. Otherwise we can become confused and we can become disillusioned and we might be wondering and asking why things aren't feeling different and frustration comes in. You see, transformation as it matures is about getting your soul in agreement with your spirit. That's where the, that's where the rubber really hits the road. Getting your soul in agreement with your spirit. The spirit that is perfect, recreated, elevated, mature, complete, not lacking in anything, has to flow through your soul and into your body. And when we learn how to walk in this transformational way, that's when we start walking in the victorious, conquering, abundant life that Jesus offers. You know, Barney here on the front row, he gave his life to the Lord, what, nearly two years ago now, is it Barney, or a year and a half? A year and a half, in this place. And um, I asked Barney if I could share this, so I'm not just kind of, you know, opening up on him. But Barney, Barney kind of came out of a bit of a bad background, taking some wrong turns, some criminal activity was going on in his life. He was a very heavy drinker, to the point of really kind of having a real, you know, drinking habit. I'm not talking a couple of cans here, he could drink a whole bottle of Cavossier brandy and still be walking, you know, so this was a serious thing going on. Now when Barney gave his life to the Lord, Barney didn't just all of a sudden, and I know this can happen because God can do anything, can, he can work in the supernatural like this, but I'm talking about the transformational process now. Barney didn't suddenly just give up drinking and be like, yeah, I'm free of drinking, great, hallelujah, praise God, I'm a born again Christian. No, he didn't. He had to fight. He had to contend. There was, there was slipping up. There was falling back. There was kind of wrestling with this thing. And he still is wrestling with this thing. Very pleased to tell you he hasn't touched a drop of drink for four months. That's pretty good. That's, that's just what you have. But how did this happen? How was this transformation taking, taking place? Barney has set his face like flint to look into this mirror on a daily basis. But yet, not just to look into this mirror, to really study this mirror, to get into this mirror. And this is my third final transformational scripture. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. You know, Barney's soul has what Andrew Womack, who's a great teacher of the word, he calls it a stop valve. Barney's soul has a stop valve on it, as do all of ours. It's called the mind. It's the mind. And Romans 12, 1 tells us this key transformational verse, not to conform, but to be transformed by what? The renewing of our minds. The mind, our mind, your mind, my mind, is the stop valve between the spirit and the body. Barney, over this transformational process, has got his soul in agreement with his spirit. 
by immersing himself in the word of God, by surrounding himself with the family of God and the community of God and being around godly people and, and, and people with, with godly values who can speak into his life. And as he has done that, as he's been doing that, he has been renewing his mind. And he's been releasing that stop valve and allowing that life-bringing spirit to just flood and to bring about change, to flood through his soul, bringing physical change into the way he believes, into the way he behaves, into the way he acts. The mind is the stop valve. And this is a lifelong journey. This is a lifelong journey. And this is the most important thing we can do as we glance, as we study and we intently look into this mirror. This is how we renew our mind. You know, I'll finish, I'll, I'll be coming to an end, but that word transformation, it comes from the Greek word metamorpho, which is where we get our English word metamorphis from. And uh, this, is, this, is, this is how, you know, you know tadpoles, how they turn into frogs and, and, and caterpillars turn into butterflies, it's metamorphis. I went on a right bunny trail on this, I was telling Andrew this morning, two hours I think I spent just studying butterflies and caterpillars. It was really good, which had Sally's t-shirt, which led me to preach. Which well, I knew I had to preach this message. But our life as a Christian is, is a metamorphic one. It's a metamorphic life. But like a caterpillar, a bit like a caterpillar. Listen, listen to this. This, is, this will blow your mind. The caterpillar's body, this is when a caterpillar metamorphosis into a, 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 a butterfly. The caterpillar's body has melted. Special enzymes dissolve, special enzymes dissolve in tissues as the creature digests itself. A bit lucky, I know, but it's okay. Its legs gone. In fact, if a caterpillar lost one of its legs during its life, not to worry, the butterfly will have six upon its emergence. The caterpillar's eyes liquefied into protein sludge to be re remade into some new part of the butterfly. The antennae gone, new ones have been grown. There's no caterpillar carefully attached wings to its back or half caterpillar, half butterfly hybrid. It's just a wet, gooey mess in that chrysalis. Man, that just blows my mind. And uh, as I was kind of going on this bunny trail, I just wanted to, I found this incredible time-lapse video of the metamorphosis process. And, um, I want to show it you because I just believe it screams God. I watch stuff like this and I'm like, how do people not believe there was an intelligent design? I just, it just blows my mind, you know. And as we watch this, like it just Romans 20, 120, I think it is, talks about how since the creation of this world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, his divine nature have been clearly seen and understood by what has been made. And as I was watching this, I felt the Lord just show me and deal to me that. As you watch this metamorphosis, I believe the Lord is going to show you areas in your life that he has been transforming, that you might not even have been aware of. He's going to show you places where you've been and where he's going to take you. And he's also going to show you places he wants to transform in your life, areas that you might not be letting him in. And I really believe that's going to happen as you just watch this, because this is just a wonderful moment. So let's just see what the Lord wants to say and do as we watch the metamorphosis. Oh, oh, oh. 